I'm Penny Dix, Astro Coach, and thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel to watch and listen to the second in a series of videos I've put together about the law of attraction and how we can find ways to use it in a more understandable and manageable way. But first of all, before I launch into this video, I just want to say thank you for joining me today. And also, if you haven't, but if you would like to, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That will also help you know when the next in this series is available. So um, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Also on my channel, I have astrology videos, and that's been my main theme for this YouTube channel. And that may be something that interests you too. So with no further ado, let's move on to why are the words we use so important? In this second video, I'm trying to work my way further into the details of how manifestation truly works and what steps you can take to fine tune your energies to match the vibrations of your desires. So why are the words we use so important? Have you heard the saying, be mindful of your self-talk because it's a conversation with the universe? Why does that matter? Why should it make any difference? Because surely a word's just a word and the same word might sound or is written differently in a different language, but hasn't it got the same meaning? Well, of course, however the word is written or pronounced in whatever language, yes, the essential meaning is the same. So that the word will always connect the speaker in whatever language with the unique vibrational meaning of a particular word. I'll explain in a little bit the word I'm going to use as an example. But first, let's just analyze the actual word, word. If you go to the Oxford Dictionary, it says it's a single distinct, meaningful element of speech or writing used with others or sometimes alone to form a sentence and typically shown with a space on either side when written or printed. Why or what is the etymology of the word word? Okay, so we know what it means. It's to describe uh, a word, because I can't think of another word, of, say, four letters. To, so there we go. It's to describe a group of letters. Well, if we look at the etymology, we find out that before the year 1400, word was actually spelled or spoken as origine and meant the fact of arising from some ancestor. And the word had been borrowed into English from the old French word, which was origine, which in turn came from the Latin originem, meaning, and this is the interesting bit, beginning, source, or birth. Now, a book I've mentioned in my last video in this series, and I'll keep probably coming back to, because it was a brilliant book written in 1926 by Florence Scovel Shin called The Game of Life and How to Play It. I will drop the title in the description box for you. I highly recommend it. The very first sentence of her book is in fact the very first sentence that we see in the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. 
So what was she trying to convey to us with this opening sentence from the Bible? Florence was not overtly um, religious, so to speak, but she did have an understanding as a metaphysician, which is what she called herself, of the various vibrations and energies that abound in our universe. So with this word, the word we are told is the word God. First of all, that's interesting because the French and the Latin have used it as origin, which is beginning, source or birth, which of course is interesting because often people will talk about God as being the all of the all, the source, the divine intelligence, whatever words we want to ascribe to it. And this is what I'm coming to because the word God means different things to different people. So let's stay with the word used by most English speaking countries. Within this context, some people will use the word God full of love, full of devotion. Some will curse with it. And others may be taken back to childhood memories or traumas experienced in the name of God. It might be useful now to just look at what the word God actually means. The reason I'm using this word will become clear later on and in subsequent videos. So stay with this because it's so important that we understand the root of everything because once you understand this root, then the rest of working with the divine, working with the law of attraction becomes so much easier. So let's just look at what the word God means. God, the supreme or ultimate reality, such as the being perfect in power, wisdom and goodness, who is worshipped as in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism, as the creator and ruler of the universe throughout the patristic and medieval periods. And Christian theologians taught that God created the universe. So, Let's look at why she uses, Florence Scovelshin uses, in the beginning there was the word and the word was God. What was she trying to tell us? So if we look at what's going on in that first sentence of Genesis, it was the use of the word God, which was the way the authors of Genesis could somehow try and convey the meaning of this greater, larger than life, incomprehensible essence or vibration. And the vibration is a key here. My understanding is that words have vibrations, let alone their individual meanings. We all collectively respond to the word God in slightly different ways. So what might connect one person with the all of the all? For another person, connects them with disappointment, fear, trauma, and so on. So the point I'm coming to you, or coming to, to, to get to for you, is it's the meaning to you and not what that word means collectively. What a word means to you is intrinsically important. So, if the word God doesn't vibrationally align with you, with the inner meaning 
and understanding you have for the generalized use of the word God, then using that word will not bring you the comfort and freedom of knowing that the divine, that's my word, has your back. And for anything where we are trying to work and co-create with the divine, we have to have this absolute faith that the divine, God, the all of the all, the divine intelligence has our back because that sets us free from trying to make things happen and actually allowing them to happen through us in a co-creative experience. This is why the choice of the words we use is so important. So to connect fully, just to recap, with the universe, the divine source, divine intelligence, God, whatever word somehow captures the essence of that feeling for you. So that the word you use has to mean in every fiber of your being, on every vibrational level that you have, that you have complete faith and connection with the divine, God. You have to feel within what connects you to that vibration. It can be any word you choose. It could be trees. But as long as it's in alignment with its true meaning and installs in you an ability to have absolute faith. So we could have uh, the, the examples I've given, universe, divine source, divine intelligence, um, guardian angel, could be someone in spirit. But it has to be the essence of that energy that somehow you know that energy has your back. That energy is guiding you. If the word you're using doesn't have that connection for you, it's gonna make life more difficult. So as I said, if the word God doesn't do it for you, no disrespect to that word and the people that revere it devoutly. That is not what I'm trying to do. I am hopefully trying to show that we all have to connect with the energy that is collectively expressed as the word God in a way that works for us. So if that word doesn't work for you, it's not your word. So it's not necessarily the word I use, I use divine. Sometimes I even just say Florence because the word Florence for me connects me with the teachings that she brought through in this book that really helped me to shift enormously in understanding how to co-create. So it has to be your word. So Let's go back to, or maybe we go forward to, why do the words we use matter so much? At this point, I want to say to you, think about how one can mindlessly talk to ourselves. And I suspect a lot of the time, you're not necessarily very kind or nice to yourself. It's hugely helpful to stand back from our self-talk and think about whether you would actually speak to others like that. You know, sometimes the, the way we can be so harsh on ourselves, we, we, we wouldn't talk to a friend, a best friend. So that often it shows how we're not really always very good friends to ourselves. And sometimes this voice, this this inner critic um, can be a parent or a teacher's voice telling us off, 
telling us we should try harder, telling us we're not good enough, we're not pretty enough, we're stupid, get a grip, move on. All those kind of sayings which are so unhelpful to anyone that is struggling. Because negative self-talk grinds us down and causes dysfunctional thinking. And it keeps us locked on a kind of hamster wheel of self-doubt. Then you get people say, oh, well, now, but I can't change because, well, I'm just made this way. I've always been like this. It's my character. Or my mother was like this. Well, I'd like to suggest that you can change and you can reprogram the way you think. The first step is the awareness of the fact that you are thinking and talking to yourself mindlessly, negatively. The next step is knowing, or at least acknowledging the fact, maybe I'm right and you can change. Then you need to seek out the best route for you to follow to promote that change. In my experience, it's rare that we can do it completely alone without seeking help from a mentor, a therapist, a coach, uh, whatever um, route works for you. But you know, the brain has an amazing capacity to change, to refire the neural pathways in healthy ways of thinking. There are some amazing uh, YouTube um, hypnotherapy videos with, with positive self-talk. There's, there's a huge amount of wonderful contributors out there that provide this content. And you, you only have to try two or three to find perhaps the, the one that resonates for you as the one to listen to. And by starting to believe that it's possible to change, the change has already started happening. So the words we use have vibrational energies which affect us at a deep cellular and soul level. So just think about that for a moment. The words we use have vibrational energies which affect us at a deep cellular and soul level. So therefore, by mindfully, consciously selecting, choosing words of joy, praise, happiness, um, telling yourself you're doing okay, telling yourself you're doing well, telling yourself you've done a good job. Then we begin the task of elevating our vibrations into alignment with our desires, desires and the desires of the divine. And once we start to feel more confident and empowered in our deepest being, it's so much easier to go with the flow that the divine is opening up to us. And, you know, it's interesting because certainly I've learned through my experience, when we're in a good place on an inner level, when we feel good about ourselves, when our self-esteem is good and we feel confident and we don't constantly beat ourselves up, it's much easier to see and sense, say, relationships that are more appropriate for us to attract into our lives, which are in alignment and bring mutual growth between you and another and love, happiness. You know, the divine actually wants us to have what we want, but we make it very hard sometimes for the divine to actually show us the way and give us what we want. But when we feel good, we're much more likely to attract someone who has the same 
higher vibration as us. These are the souls that we need in our lives. These are the people we need in our, our soul group, our friend group. These are the people that can, we can mutually teach each other. We can mutually grow. And the same, of course, applies to our soul direction and career path. We achieve much more from a place of self-worth and self-knowledge. And sometimes talents or hobbies we've got that we've been told, that's not a proper job. Get yourself a proper job. And we go, oh, it's all so boring. I've got to go into that office five days a week and do something I really don't enjoy doing. No, life's not meant to be like that. There are people who enjoy, say, um, putting input into a computer for, for, a, for a firm, for, you know, being, being, putting figures in, etc. But what fires you up? What is your passion? And I suspect if you're watching this video, you may feel that on some level you haven't or haven't yet been really in alignment with what you feel your soul direction should be. But once you're in alignment with the right energies, with the divine, and you allow the fact that the divine has your back, then the potential can start to unfold in you. And once that unfolds and you have confidence, new doors start to open up. Signs. Signs from the divine, as you remember my word, doesn't have to be your word, are very simple and usually right under our noses. Don't look too hard. So don't look and you will see, but do ask and you will receive. Use your words wisely with thought because it's always our careless, lazy thinking that trips us up. So as I bring this particular video to a close, I just want to say, the divine wants you to shine, but the divine really needs your cooperation. Thank you so much for joining me today. And just to let you know that the next Law of Attraction video, I will be helping you to see how to ask the divine for what you want, how to use the right wording, and how to recognize the path ahead that's opening up is the best path. So how to co-create with the divine. Thank you so much for joining me. Also, if you would like to have a one-to-one -one with me for astro coaching or life coaching, I'd be only too happy to connect with you. My website and how to contact me is in the description box beneath the video. And thank you again for joining me and happy co create happy co happy co cro happy co creating I'll get it right in a minute because we must use our words correctly. Happy co creating and I really wish that you bring about the change in yourself that will bring about the change you seek in your life.